So here's another calculate the equilibrium concentration question. Only this one here is going to be, well, okay, there's going to be a little twist to it that you might like or not like, but it's something that you really, well, you're going to want to know. So we have, here's a system at equilibrium right here. It's really the dissociation of something called hydrosulfuric acid into its ions in solution, where the K value, which is really called the Ka value, equals 8.9 times 10 to the negative 8. All right. Now, we're given an initial concentration of the H2S and none of the other chemicals here. The question is, calculate all the equilibrium concentrations. So let's go. Initially, we have that. We have nothing here and nothing here. What's the change going to be? This is going to lose x of itself here to gain x here and gain x here. There are no other numbers other than ones in front here for the coefficients, so it's one, negative x and plus x and plus x. So at equilibrium, we're going to have 0.100 minus x and x, right, x. What's the K equal? It equals the concentration of the H positive times the concentration of the HS negative, all divided by the concentration of the H2S, right there. Now let's plug the numbers in. 8.9 times 10 to the negative 8 equals, what are these two? Both X, so it's X squared over what? The concentration of 0.100 0, 0, 0 minus X. Hey, in the last example, it was kind of nice because that was a squared term and then you could take the square root of each side. Now, now we're stuck. And look, what we've got here is, we've got 8.9 times 10 to the negative 8. That's a term that we've got to multiply this through here and here, and then have x squared on top, and it looks like it's unavoidable. It's quadratic time. Well, not really. Okay, now here's why. Did you notice in the last question? And you did. You, know, you did the previous one, and you're saying, you know, x ended up being such a small number that when we took it away from the original concentration of the reactants, we didn't really get a change in their concentration to anything significant digit-wise that we could actually notice. Well, if that's the case, then it might be here too that x is such a small number that when you take it away from point 0.1, think about it, tiny, tiny, tiny minus point 0.1 still might equal point 0.1 to th two or three significant digits. And we're going to keep two in the end anyway. So really, this x term here, we can just not even worry about it. And then we can do the math by multiplying this times this and taking the square root and getting x, and that's it, no quadratic. Can you really do that? Yeah, now here's the rule. The rule now, this is a generalization, and it, and it works pretty well here. Uh, when we have things that we're measuring in the tens or the, the hundreds to the thousandth of a decimal, if you take the original concentration of the chemical, whatever the initial concentration is of any chemical, and divide it by the K value, if you get a, that number there that's greater than or equal to 1,000, you can actually disregard X when it's added to or subtracted from something. And the only time you can take away the X is when it's added to something or subtracted from something if you want to be able to make the math easier for yourself. Now wait, the initial concentration here is 0.1, right there. And when you divide by that K value right there, which is 10 to negative 8, you are going to get a number that's going to be around 10 to the negative, no, 10 to the positive 7 or something. So that number is hugely larger than the number 1,000. So if that initial concentration divided by that K value greater than or equal to 1,000, which it is in this case, you can take away that X term in the denominator and not worry about it. So that's gone right there. So it's just point 0.1 now. Chem guy, what's going to happen? My teacher's not going to make me, let me disregard X. Yes, they will. If you can disregard it, you do disregard it. And you know what? Most teachers don't even give you questions where you can't disregard it. And I'll tell you why. Because if you write a state exam, a provincial exam, like we do here in Alberta. If you write an IB examination or an AP test exam, all over the world, they are, the people who construct those exams, are not interested in you doing any type of long polynomial to have to solve, especially in, in a, in a, in a time-constraint type of test. What they're testing for is chemistry, not mathematical skill. So here's the deal. When you get to that stage, you should be pretty confident that any question they give you, you're going to be able to disregard the X when it's added to or subtracted from something. I'm not kidding. Really. So, 
Here's the thing. If that's the case right here and that's gonzo, that times that equals x squared. So it's going to be 8.9 times 10 to the negative 9, when you multiply those two together, equals x squared. So x equals that right there. Okay, so now here's the deal. When you take the square root of that number right there, you get x, which equals 9.343 times 10 to the negative 5. Well, guess what that is? That is the concentration of the H positive and the HS negative at equilibrium. And so, I, see, notice I should put this all the time. EQN, that's the concentration at equilibrium. Sometimes you'll see a zero there, and that's the concentration initially, or at time zero. So, um, now, look. Uh, that's the concentration then of that those two chemicals there, and I should keep my two significant digits. So it's going to be 9.4 times 10 to the negative 5. And when you take that number away as x from 0.1 right there, which is at equilibrium, right? What you're going to get is essentially to two significant digits, 0 0.0.10 moles per liter. That's how you do a question where you can disregard x when you add it to or subtract it from a number.